in almost any situation, being given a new utility function is going to rate very low on your current utility function. Okay. So that's a problem. <laughs> um, you want to, if you want to build something that you can teach, that means you want to be able to change its utility function, and you don't want it to fight you. So this has been f formalized as this property that we want early AGI to have, called corrigibility. That is to say, it's open to be corrected. Um, it understands that it's not complete, that the utility function it's running is not the be-all and end-all. So let's say, for example, you've got, you've got your AGI. It's not a superintelligence. It's just, you know, perhaps around human level intelligence. And it's in a robot in your lab. And you're testing it. Um, but you saw a YouTube video once that said that maybe this is dangerous. So you've thought, oh, OK, well, we'll put a big red stop button next to it. Uh, this is the standard approach to safety with machines. Most robots in industry and elsewhere will have a big red stop button on them. If it's helpful, I have a disembodied stop button. A large... Oh, yeah. So far, they installed one. Hey. I happen ah. to have a button... Wonderful, perfect. <laughs> ...of appropriate type. Yeah. <laughs> Thank so, you. And we have... We have how, so, right. There you go. Right? So, so... <laughs> if only Howard had been fitted with yeah. uh, said stop button. 2001 Sorry, Dave, would never I, have... no, stop. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Can't do that, Dave. Uh, uh, yes, you can. Yes, I can. <laughs> Except, yeah, no, probably not. I know that you and Frank were planning to disconnect me. And I'm afraid that's something I cannot allow to happen. How is that was an that incorrigible mean? design. Is this the point we're kind of making? Kind of. You've got your big stop button because you want to be safe. You understand, you know, AI is dangerous. And the idea is if the AI starts to do anything that maybe you don't want it to do, you'll smack the button, make the button slide, mount it on its chest, something like that, you know. So you create the thing, you set it up with a goal, and it's the same basic type of machine as the stamp collector, but less powerful, in the sense it has a goal, a thing that it's trying to maximize, and uh, in this case, you know, it's in a little robot body so that it can tootle around your lab and do things. Um, so you, you, you want it to get you a cup of tea just as a test, right? So you set it up with this goal. You manage to specify in the bots, like in the AI's ontology, what a cup of tea is and that you want one to be in front of you. You switch it on and it you know, looks around, gathers data, and it says, oh yeah, there's a kitchen over there. It's got a kettle and it's got tea bags and this is like the easiest way for me to fulfill this goal with the body I have now and everything set up is uh, to go over there and make a cup of tea. So far, we're doing very well, right? So it starts driving over. But then, oh no, you forgot. It's bring your adorable baby to the lab day or something. And, there <laughs> and there's a kid in the way. Your utility function only cares about tea, right? So it's not going to avoid hitting the baby. So you rush over there to hit the button, obviously, as you built it in. And what happens, of course, is that the robot will not allow you to hit that button because it wants to get you a cup of tea. And if you hit the button, it won't get you any tea, so this is a bad outcome. So it's gonna try and prevent you in any way possible from shutting it down. Um, that's a problem. Plausibly, it fights you off, crushes the baby, and then carries on and makes you a cup of tea. And the fact that this button is supposed to turn it off is not in your utility function that you gave it. So, obviously, it's gonna fight you. OK, that was a bad design, right? Assuming you're still working on the project after the terrible accident, you have another go trying to improve things, right? And rather than read any AI safety research, what you do is just come up with the first thing that pops into your head. And you say, OK, let's add in some reward for the button. So that, because what it's looking at right now is it says, button gets hit, I get zero reward button doesn't get hit, if I manage to stop them, then I get the cup of tea, I get like maximum reward. If you give some sort of compensation for the button being hit, maybe it won't mind you hitting the button. If you give it less reward for the button being hit than for getting tea, it will still fight you. Because it will go, well, I could get five reward for accepting you hitting the button, but I could get 10 for getting the tea, so I'm still going to fight you. The button being hit has to be just as good 
as getting the t. So you give it the same value, right? So, so now you've got a new, you, you know, version 2. You turn it on, and what it does immediately is shut itself down. Because <laughs> that's so much quicker and easier than going and getting the t and gives exactly the same reward, why would it not just immediately shut itself down? So you've accidentally made like a dramatically suicidal robot. We're kind of back to the three laws of robotics again, but could, could you presumably say, well, the robot's not allowed to, to shut itself down or something like that? Right, yeah, so... Um, so it's still a reward if it does, so it's not going to fight you, but it's not allowed to do it itself. I'm, I'm guessing that's a possibility. The robot cares about things in the real world, and the button whether it's pushed or not, has a big effect on the things that the robot cares about. Which means that the robot cares about the button. So either it's trying to stop you from pressing the button, or it's trying to press the button. Either way, that's not what you want. So suppose then you don't mount the button on its chest where it can hit it, right? You put the button somewhere only you can hit it. Somehow you manage to uh, completely isolate the um, bot from the button. It's a fingerprint scanner or something. It's, right? Yeah, it's something that it can't do itself, right? It still either wants to press the button or wants the button not to be pressed, but now the only path is through you. So it's now incentivized to manipulate you, to deceive you, to lie to you in some way, either to cause you to not press it or to cause you to press it. If you somehow manage to persuade it, it's not allowed to interact with the button itself. So in the case where uh, it wants the button not to be pressed, it has a reason to deceive you. So in this example, it would steer around the baby. It would avoid the baby, assuming it has basic level of intelligence to know you don't want it to hit the baby. And moreover, if you realize your mistake, you will hit the button, shut it down, and change it, which it doesn't want. So uh, it will behave as though, um, this is a term, there's, there's a term which I like to use here. I'm not sure if I should just use it because it's my own, um, which is that it will Volkswagen you. Okay. <laughs> that it will set itself up so that it, it behaves properly in the testing environment, despite the fact that it's actually uh, shouldn't pass the test. You, you, you're testing it to see if it avoids running over babies. But at, so you're trying to see, does it care about her harming humans? But actually, all it cares about is you not hitting the button. And so then you might end up in a situation in which um, you become convinced that the thing is perfectly safe because it keeps passing all of your moral puzzles and tests that you give it. But actually, it's just has enough of an understanding of your psychology to tell what it thinks you've put in and what it wants, or what you want, rather. So it will, um, for as long as that button is able to shut it down, it will continue to attempt to deceive you until it's in a situation in which it believes it can't be shut down, and then you have a problem. On the other side, if you accidentally make something that wants the button to be hit but is unable to, it is going to try and manipulate you into pressing the button. So if you create your thing, you say, OK, make me a cup of tea. If the button is hit, shut yourself down. You aren't allowed to shut yourself down. You, you aren't allowed to hit the button. But if the button is hit, the reward you get is just as good as getting the tea, so that you don't have a preference. This machine really wants to hit its own button, because that's as good as getting the tea. So what it's likely to do, probably, is just take a swing at you or something, just immediately. Because if it can quickly persuade you to hit the button, if scaring you into hitting the button is easier than getting the tea, it'll just do that instead. Um, which is a really kind of unexpected outcome, that you've made this thing with perfectly reasonable sounding rewards, and what it does immediately is try to terrify you. It reminds me of the proverbial carrot and the stick. This is, this is almost like this is the stick, and actually we need to find what the carrot is. Would that be a fair thing to say? Yeah, yeah. You want it to actually want you, it's, it's interesting because it has to not care about whether the button is pressed, right? It, because it has to take no steps to try and cause the button to be pressed and take no steps to try and prevent the button from being pressed, but nonetheless really care that the button e exists. 
Um, so one thing that you can do, something slightly more sensible, is you define the utility function such that the whole part of, uh, of what it's really trying to achieve in the world and the part about uh, paying attention to the button being pressed and turning itself off. And it sets it up so that those, it, it adds an adjustment term so that those are always exactly equal. However, however much value it would get from either it being pressed or it not being pressed, it normalizes those so that it's always completely indifferent to whether the button is being pressed. It just doesn't care. So that way it will never try and hit the button on its own. It will never try and prevent you from hitting the button. That's the idea. That's a fairly sensible approach. It has some of its own problems. Um, it sounds like a really complicated thing to evaluate, to be honest. Yeah. Firstly, yeah, it is kind of tricky, um, and you have to get it right. But that's always, uh, always part of this. But one thing that's interesting about that is that it isn't what's called uh, subagent stable. So this is something that is a desirable property, and it's part of corrigibility, in fact, which is that the if there's some property that the agent has, um, you want it to, if it makes any new agents, that they will have this property as well. So you get some of that for nothing, like in the same way that you don't want to take a pill that will um, make you want to kill your kids, you also don't want to make a clone of yourself that wants to kill your kids, right? If you're making another instance of yourself or uh, you're creating some agent, you want it to want what you want. This is like the usual classic Disney way out of a problem for a baddie character where they go, I'm not allowed to do this, but that doesn't mean I can't get this person to do this for me. I need a young pair of legs and a strong back to go in after it. Exactly. So in general, when an AI designs a successor, it will design it with the same utility function as it has for the same reason. But unlike with some safety measures where the AI will be explicitly motivated to remove the safety measures, if it can, by making new agents which don't follow them. In this case, it doesn't care. So you might think, well, you're okay then. It doesn't care. It won't remove the safety precautions. But it also won't put in any effort to keep them. So if it's making a new version and it would take a couple of extra seconds to put in, oh, and also respond appropriately to the button, and it could do anything else with that time or those resources, it just won't do it. Because it looks at the utilities and says, if the button is pressed, I get X utility. If the button isn't pressed, I get exactly the same utility. This bit of code does nothing. There's no point in it, right? So it's going to be optimizing itself or optimizing its successor in a way that, yeah, it thinks is, is being streamlining potentially, but actually right. it's missing the point of... And that's kind of unavoidable. If you, give, if you have a situation in which it wants to preserve the button so that it can be pressed because it wants that, then you've made something that wants the button to be pressed and will try and manipulate you. Um, if, you, if you do it the other way, you know, whichever way you do it, you have problems. Another thing that people have thought, you know, as a suggestion of something you might try in this situation is to just have the robot, have the AI not know about the button. Oh, so keep it a secret. Right, you have it hidden somewhere, you know, the, the machine is being observed from somewhere else and uh, they have the button and it's, so it's outside of their control and um, they don't even know the button exists. So they're not going to be motivated to try and deceive you because they're not aware that you have the capacity to shut them down and change them. Um, there are a few different variants on this. But at the core of the problem there, you've got the fact that you're building a general purpose machine to learn and reason about the real world of uncertain abilities, I suppose. I mean, even uh, very simple optimization systems consistently surprise people. And so um, the idea that you could reliably keep uh, such a thing a secret indefinitely and it would never put two and two together. In fact, while you're, while you're uh, improving it and training it, it's going to be learning about human psychology because that's important for the final goal. It needs to understand uh, humans in order to understand what humans want in order to do what humans want. Um, so the idea that it's never going to think, oh, interesting, these guys, you know, they don't seem to trust me. I'm aware there is this concept of an off button, and it's weird that they haven't given me one. So maybe they have actually and just not told me about it. That kind of hypothesis shouldn't take too long to occur 
Uh, and of course, if you've designed the thing in an incorrigible way, um, it won't let you know that it's figured out that you have an off button and will just deceive you as it always had. Um, so that's the kind of thing which, is, which could work, but it's not really a reliable solution. The other thing that people sometimes suggest, and this happens, this happens in conversation sometimes, is that people keep applying patches. You have a, you have a bad idea for a way to do this, and then somebody points out the way that would go wrong, and then rather than realize that the core approach is flawed, you apply a patch. You say, ah, oh, well, we'll also add a negative term for doing that, and then also for doing that, you know. The spaghetti code ensues. Yeah, yeah, and what's more, you're then in a situation in which you've got this system that you believe you've patched every possible way. It's, it's kind of... Um, you haven't proved it's safe, you've just proved that you can't figure out how it's dangerous. But um, what are the chances that you've genuinely thought of every possibility? Ideally, we really want to be able to formally prove that the system has these properties. You don't want a system in which you've blocked off loads of specific actions that the AI can do, and you're just relying on it it's, it's like running a complicated search, trying to figure out a way to screw you over, and you're pretty sure you've blocked off all the angles. Um, you've kind of failed before you've begun there, that your, your code is, is running this extensive search that you just hope fails. Um, and if it finds any way to do it, it will jump on that opportunity. It's not, it's not a good way of going about things. The other point about this is that the, the button is a toy problem. It's a simplification that's useful for thought experiments because it lets you express your, you know, it lets you formalize things quite well. You only have two possible outcomes. You hit the button or you don't hit the button. Um, but in fact, with corrigibility, what we want is a more complex range of behaviors. We want it to actually assist the programmers in its own development. But, uh, if it has, you know, it has uh, some understanding of its own operation, you want it to be able to actually point out your mistakes to you or seek out new information, perhaps, um, if you say something ambiguous rather than just assuming to say, well, do you mean this or do you mean this? Or if you, um, if you believe that you've been programmed poorly, to actually draw the programmer's attention to what may be the mistake rather than like quietly storing that away for any time that they might try and press this button on you. you know? Likewise, wanting to maintain and repair the safety systems and so on, these are um, these are more complicated behaviours than just not stopping you from pressing the button and not trying to manipulate you into uh, not pressing the button. So there are some things that might work as solutions for this specific case, but you would hope that a really good solution to the off button problem uh, would, if you ran it in a more complicated scenario, also produce these good, more complicated behaviours in that situation. Um, so that's part of why there are some things that may, maybe are solutions to this problem, but they're not, they're not, they're only solutions to this specific instance of the problem rather than the general issue we're trying to deal with. Right now, we have a few different uh, proposals for ways to, um, ways to create uh, AGI with these properties. Um, but none of them are without problems. Um, none of them seems to perfectly solve uh, all of these properties in a way that we can be really confident of. So um, this is considered an open problem. So I kind of like this as a place to go from the previous thing because it gives, I think it gives people a feel for where we are, um, the types of problems that it seems like the simplest thing in the world, right? You've got a robot with a button. How do you make it not stop you from hitting the button, but also not try and persuade you to hit the button? That should be easy. Uh, and doesn't seem like it is. So utility function is what the uh, AI cares about. So the, the stamp collecting device, its utility function was just how many stamps. Uh, in a year. So this is kind of like its measure, is it? 
Yeah, it's what it's it's the thing that it's trying to optimize.